Alrighty guys, we just got some huge news from Torn Banner and uh, the Shidlery 2 community. It looks like patch 2.7, the winter, winter War Public Testing, is tomorrow on the 15th. So this is a long-awaited map that they've been teasing in other trailers. Just glimpses of it. So now we're going to get our hands on it. So it's going to be a new Mason versus Agatha map. Sieging this castle here, along with a new weapon, the quarterstaff. The playtest is going to be from 1 p.m. Eastern to 8 p.m. Eastern. So for me, this test ends, begins at 11 a.m., ends at 6 p.m. So I'm going to do my best to attend as much as I can. I'll probably stream a bit and, um, you know, hopefully I'll get as much gameplay footage as I can for you guys, but we'll see. <laughs> we're definitely going to get some, but we'll see. Um, these, the, what we're going to go through is not the full patch notes because they will be releasing that later on. And, um, this play test is also Epic Game Store only, so... I'm not sure if you can download it, if you haven't bought it, um, you know, maybe tomorrow we'll figure that out, but I think it's for people who own the game on Epic Game Store, unfortunately. Um, and they're also going to be doing another live dev stream tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. So check that out if you want to see some more gameplay footage as well from our boy uh, Moon Moon here. And, um, yeah, let's dive right into it. So, here's the picture that we saw glimpses of in, uh, the Tunisian video ages ago. And, um, the Faic Stronghold. Let's read on. Mason forces land on the shores of the Agathian heartland and assault Argon II's Final Stronghold. The new Stronghold map is playable in the limited time Winter War Q. The Masons have cornered the Agathians in their northern Stronghold. In the wretched cold, the Mason or Order actions on the one command from the grizzled king himself. Kill the self-proclaimed leader of Agatha and be rid of the rebellion once and for all. The Agathian Knights, however, have never been more unified than before. Under the banners of the Cross and Lion, the blue and gold shine as bright as King Argon II's armor. <laughs> like the harsh wind of the land, Argon II shouts, Fight for Agatha! <laughs> In this map, Masons are tasked to siege the Thaic stronghold and kill Argon II. However, this will not be easy. The shoreline is heavily defended with art artillery, and the masons must break through the walls, lowering the main fort's drawbridge, and capture the courtyard right in front of Argon's doorstep. Interesting. So here's the objectives here. So the first one is blow up the shoreline defense towers, breach the stronghold's bell tower, second objective third objective destroy the strongholds banners so maybe something similar to line spire lower the drawbridge maybe mechanics that are similar to uh fallmeyer opening the uh cage holding in um thorn um capture the courtyard maybe similar to rudhelm's capturing of the courtyard and then the final kill the art on the second so this is kind of like mixing up objectives from multiple different things you've got aberfell blow up the towers maybe you know i feel like it's gonna feel um very much like a mix of aberfell lion spire fallmire it's gonna have objectives maybe from all these but you know we'll see tomorrow right as the Agathian Knights, defenders must stop the Masons from completing each of these objectives. However, should they reach the sixth objective, the top scoring player will become the VIP and lead the charge to turn the tide of battle. Okay, seems like a very classic map. Um, some objectives will feature horse spawns, and horses can be found within the map itself. I have a feeling that they're going to do a horseless and... Um, a 40 man, 40 man horse version of this map unless they add 64 man horses in this patch which I doubt it 
but you know we'll see so we have a new uh, VIP which is King Argon the second um, and um, yeah we know what the VIP is here uh, there are multiple pathways in this map attackers and defenders must be aware and choose wisely ah, interesting okay so here we go here's the meat we got the quarter staff boys <clears throat> reimagined for chivalry 2 the original chivalry's quarter staff makes a return designed for the crusader class this weapon has quick short ranged slash attacks and slow mid long range stabs and overheads in addition, it has a unique special attack that can cleave through opponents and is more efficient at blocking. Reducing stamina consumption on block, it will take a little bit more effort to disarm the person wielding it in comparison to other weapons. So from this description here, it's telling me that it's kind of could be more of a defensive blunt weapon that maybe, you know, could, could uh, do some stamina damage with its cleave. Um, also the stabs might be a little bit slower, so it's probably, you know, it's, it, it's probably, I don't know. We'll have to see exactly what it feels like, but, um, it, to me, it seems like kind of a defensive weapon, right? It seems really cool. Um, okay. So the, another huge important change, I think, is the Highlander sword, right? So they adjusted the oversize, uh, the overall size of the weapon to be shorter, right? Feedback from the community described the Highlander sword size as fairly excessive. Uh, we have tuned the size of the sword itself, but overall, we expect that it is still a powerful weapon in the sandbox to use. So the Highlander sword has already been kind of nerfed and if they don't change or increase maybe the swing speed a little bit or adjust some other numbers around it i think this is going to be considered an even harsher nerf but um you know if it's shorter i'm envisioning maybe they're maybe making it a little bit quicker or maybe adjusting its damage um but overall i think this is good i think it's way too big <laughs> i've always said it's a highland the highlander sword is like a final fantasy weapon so i i personally like this some people really enjoy the girthiness of the highlander sword but you know we'll see how much they reduce its size javelins no longer interrupt opponent's attack when thrown this is huge we have noted a lot of recent discussion regarding the javelins and how they can feel to fight against we have made a change to resolve two issues one where the javelin feels very oppressive with its interrupt to regular players two vips no longer have the issue of getting interrupted by it i think that this overall could be good um you know i started playing javelin more when i was doing weapon requests and stuff and you know for pc it's kind of kind of hard sometimes to hit people so like but for console players with the auto aim i think it was, they had a much easier time and the annoying thing about the interrupts was that when you're in a 1bx a javelin would hit you and you would basically just lose that 1bx like every time because of projectiles so i think that this is going to be good overall for the game but um this might anger some some javi players uh we'll see <laughs> But um, I think overall that this is a good change. Uh, Katars fixed an issue where offhand items could not be equipped after switching weapons. Okay. Uh, fixed an issue where sprint attack would not do damage during footman's sprint charge. Fixed an issue where the special attack's second hit would be unblockable after blocking the first hit. Okay. So, um,. Also fix an issue where the weapon tracers were less accurate during a few attacks. Okay, so this this one right here kind of might make me worried. Like, I think the Qatar needs a buff. And, like, the Qatar really <laughs> kind of um, relies on the special attack to be effective. Um, so I'm wondering how they're going to play and if they adjust maybe its damage numbers a little bit because I think it's severely underpowered and i think most of the community agrees <clears throat> and um i i think they need 
a pretty good rework. Um, so hopefully this fixes some issues with it, but honestly, I think it needs a buff. <laughs> Polax looks like it's slashing damage uh, got buffed a bit. Uh, heavy and regular by five. Um, fix an issue where Polax wasn't applying the reduced stamina loss on block. Okay. Polax is a cult favorite had requests to make it a little bit more popular. We have slightly increased the appeal of the weapon as a contender in the sandbox. Nice. I think this is good. You know, there's other weapon choices that are much better. And, um, you know, we'll see how this plays out. Heavy Mace fixed an issue where Heavy Mace wasn't applying the reduced stamina loss on block. Uh, stamina is now reduced 10, 20% less on block. Okay. Cool. Um, new carryables. Looks like we might be able to take some taxidermy heads and animal heads and stuff and throw them at each other. We got some frozen fish. You know, the usual paintings. It looks like you might be taking stuff off walls and hucking it at each other, which is cool. We got um, new interactable objects here. Rope ladders, which could be pretty interesting. And uh, breakable ice. So it looks like you're probably going to be trolling people by breaking uh you know icicles off of with your throwing knives <laughs> in hoping that they, they land on your targets just like um you know any other hangable object right jabs okay i think this is important here uh fixed an issue where jab would have range inconsistencies while looking up or down i think that this is going to be good i i felt like i could really duck jabs a lot um and i do crouch a lot if you've ever watched me <laughs> um so you know maybe i'll get got more with the jab increased jab timeout when inputted out of a deflected state such as uh, when being uh, such as when being countered okay um okay so it looks like maybe there's a longer cooldown on the jab um when being inputted out of a deflected state okay so if you like counter a jab it has a longer cooldown so you can't just keep jabbing okay interesting Hit regulation on jabs was noted to be inconsistent, especially when jabbing someone who's crouched when it feels like it should have hit. We did a review of the jab tracers and made adjustments so that the range of the jab should be a lot more consistent, whether you're pitched up, neutral, or down. Okay, so it looks like they fixed some hit regulation issues. The horse... Okay, fixed issues um, were place spike traps and bear traps would not damage the horse. Fixed an issue where certain environmental spike traps would damage horses when destroyed. Fixed an issue where a player's shield would not be auto-equipped when their lance breaks. Okay. Fixed an issue where bandages would not be supplied from animal, ammo boxes while on horseback. Fixed an issue where killing a horse with a lance would guarantee a hit on the rider. <coughs> Excuse me. Fix an issue where colliding with another rider would result in a slowed movement state. Okay, interesting. So these are all good, good fixes here for the horse. Fix an issue where the horse would appear sliding to others while battle crying. Okay. The Pava Shield. Yes, there is an issue with the Pava Shield where it would displace their character movement after being kicked and I believe that you could also charge into the Pava shield and it would teleport you like 20 meters ahead of it. So hopefully all these issues are fixed with the Pava shield throwables fixed an issue where throwing uh, and ranged weapons would not deal damage if thrown right after the thrower's death. Cool. So this means that, you know, if you threw a javelin and then you died after you threw it, it and it hit your target, it did no damage. So hopefully it's more true to what it would be in life. Um, also fixed an issue where throwing weapons would not refuel. Good. Flaming Chicken no longer sets teammates on fire and will cause team damage 
when jabbing. <clears throat> um, this is kind of sad. You can't really troll your teammates anymore, but you know, it would happen quite often actually. So <laughs> I'm glad that they fix that. We'll see how it plays. Um, further fixes to prevent players being able to turn into a sprint attack from 180 degrees. Okay. Interesting. Um, fix an issue where dismounting horses and siege weapons would change your game perspective. Okay, nice. Fix an exploit where players could launch themselves at incredible speeds with the one-handed spear and javelin special attack. Oh, the old pogo stick, dude. I think this was used mainly in duels. I never really saw it too much in TO, but this has been in the game forever, I feel like. Um, fix an issue where attacks could combo into a slash after hitting eight teammates. Okay, so there's some general fixes here. Performance and crash fixes. We've got fixed an issue with the resolution settings with that save. I think that this might have been an issue more on console. I don't, I don't think I've ever really run into this. Let me know in the comments if you have. Fixed a server crash that would occur when F10ing on horseback. Interesting. Okay, animation fixed an issue where the ragdolls would sometimes fall through the map. <laughs> that happens quite often. Fix an issue where, oh, this was when um, also, you know, you would kill a player and they would just disappear, right? So I think that's what that issue was. Fix an issue where the player would be stuck in the falling animation state after throwing their weapon while jumping and crouching. This is good. And I also noticed that even after my projectile lands and then I try to flourish, it would still try to zoom in on my projectile that um, already hit the ground. And it would switch my perspective for about half a second. It was really annoying. So hopefully they fix that and it's related to this. Um, fix an issue where crossbow would have inconsistent animations while on horseback. Cool. Um, headbutting guitars now makes a sound. UI adjusted the distance. Okay, yada yada yada. Um, looks like some general UI fixes. I don't think this is worth really going over too too much in depth. You guys can read about that yourself. Um, this is huge. Um, fix an issue where the join game button on the social screen would not bring the user to a friend's game for standalone servers. This is going to be nice. So if I join a standalone server, all you guys can just hit the join game button maybe. Um, this button just ex has existed for a while and just never worked. So, and it looks like it probably still doesn't work for matchmaking, but we'll see how this goes. Further improvements made to prevent VIPs from being vote kick. Nice. And we have, last but not least, some known public test issues that they know are going to be in tomorrow's playtest. So entering into a game later after stage 2 will show the bell tower in the non-destroyed state. Okay, the bell tower will continue floating after stage 2 is completed. So some UI bugs here. Uh, the quarterstaff incorrect rank up text is showing mid-match. Okay, interesting. So far, I'm liking pretty much everything that I see. I really like the Highlander sword size reduction. <laughs> I know some people won't like that. Quarter snap also looks badass to me. Um, I mean, I, I think that this weapon should have been in the... I wish it was in the base state of the game. We'll see how it plays, though. It looks very defensive. And the map looks great to me. I, I don't think that they're going to have too many more cosmetics. Um, I'm really looking forward to seeing pelts though, Moon Moon, if you can. Um, and maybe a wolf helmet, you know, a wolf pelt helmet. But other than that, I think that this patch is going to be great. The map looks amazing to me. It's about time we had a nice snowy map. And um, I'm looking forward to playing it tomorrow. So look out for some gameplay footage. I will probably do a video. Um tomorrow of just no commentary just straight gameplay and i will probably stream it at some point tomorrow so look out for that i do stream to twitch and youtube uh so yeah much love 
Have a good night. I'll put this link in the description below and have fun slaying knights.